I want to thank Research Consultants International for sponsoring today's podcast. They're a globally renowned lead generation firm that helps economic development organizations create real prospects. They've helped over 500 economic development organizations. Let me tell you exactly what they do. They facilitate one-on-one meetings for economic developers with corporate executives who will have projects soon. They can facilitate these meetings to where you travel to the corporate executive's office and meet them there, or you meet them at a trade show, or even have a conference call so you don't have to pay for travel. They recently launched a service called FDI 365, which provides you a lead a day of fast-growing companies that will be expanding soon. Their research has helped over $5 billion in projects get cited since inception. I encourage you to go to www.researchfdi.com to learn more about research consultants. As far as I'm concerned, they are absolutely the best lead generation firm in the business for economic development organizations. Call them now. They can help you create real prospects. Welcome to this week's episode of the Next Move Group We Are Jobs podcast. This is Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. And Alex Metzger, the other co-founder of Next Move Group. So we're coming to you today. Exciting times for our company. We launched a website this week, and if you go to it, you can learn all about really what we do and how we do it. But we really want to do a podcast today to talk about why we do what we do, why we founded the company, and what really drives our mission that's driving our growth. And so Alex is in New Orleans today. We're recording this on Mardi Gras, on Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday. So Zulu's rolling right now, which is one of my favorite parades. People not from New Orleans are not going to know what that means, but that's one of my favorite parades Maybe we'll catch a coconut. Have you ever caught a coconut? I have never caught a coconut. I have caught a shoe, but that's really oh, you the caught only... a Musa's shoe. Yeah, if you come to New Orleans for Mardi Gras, the Musa's shoe is uh, is a is a crave possession, and Alex caught one his first time. But the uh, the day is still young. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody! And uh, I'm going to be out there chasing coconuts pretty soon. It is young. It's 11 o'clock on Mardi Gras day, and we're working. So see, that proves that we're really uh, interested in our mission, which is create economic growth for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations. Most of you have seen recently our business has really grown. I think we grew 70% last year. And so we just launched a new website, really tying together uh, all of what we do, and it's thenextmovegroup.com. And so we'll probably say that two or three times, encouraging traffic to go there. And when you go there, you can really see how and what we do. But today we want to talk about the why. Our most listened to podcast so far in this series was when you and I did the um, interviewing tips. Yep. So since you're in Mardi Gras, we thought we'd sit down. We launched this website this week and really go over why we do what we do. So if you go to our website, you're going to see a big American flag waving, and it talks about how we want to create economic growth for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations. That really drives our decisions, and that's our mission. And we both got kind of stories we bring to that table. For me, I was raised in a small southern town, not an interstate in sight, a 5,000-person town. And my dad worked at a sunbeam plant. And overnight, the plant was closed. Not only did he work there, his twin brother worked there who just passed away. My uh, aunt and uncle worked there. And uh, overnight, the plant was, was basically reduced to nothing but a warehouse. It's still there today. But there's only like 10 employees. And, and all the jobs had 700 employees. All the jobs were shipped to China. And so uh, when I get up every day, I really think about how do we help small to mid-sized communities grow with small to mid-sized companies? You know, what I'm interested in are communities attracting those companies uh, who are going to invest a whole lot of money and locate somewhere, and they won't move to China to save a penny. Maybe they're still family-owned, $500 million in revenue. That really is what drives me. So I get up every day thinking about really how can we create economic growth for those type folks. When my family... Uh, in the 80s and 90s, they were a large family of entrepreneurs, owned restaurants, and, and the main family business was meat packing plants in southern Illinois and western Kentucky. Uh, and they were very successful with these meat packing plants until Walmart and other big box retailers uh, kind of got into that industry and really changed the market to where they couldn't compete. Um, and so they had to shut all those plants down, and it really affected my family and taught me a lesson at a young age uh, that to be a small business owner, uh, you really have to be nimble and, and understand that there are outside factors that are always going to change your business model and can change your livelihood uh, in the matter of a year or two. So when I got into economic development, I was really drawn to 
to helping small manufacturing companies and, and that side of it grow and adapt and find workers and be profitable. And so now that I'm on the consulting side with Chad, uh, the site selection component of it and being able to figure out that puzzle uh, is something that's very, very important to me, and I trace that back to when I was younger. And I'm telling you right now, uh, as we were really honing our mission and, and uh, figuring out how do we get this on paper, so this has always been our mission, and this has always been in my mind and probably more so in my gut feeling, but we're trying to figure out how do we get this on paper, which is now the website that you can see if you go to the nextmovegroup.com. But we t- totally believe that the small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations are vital to America's uh, growth. And even in the big cities, you know, we're here in New Orleans, urban city. I can tell you a lot of what's driving the, the growth in New Orleans right now are these small to mid-sized nonprofit organizations, not just chambers of commerce and economic development, educational organizations, and so forth. So uh, we really want to help all of those type of organizations uh, be successful because that is going to grow the American economy. And all this came about during the Goldman Sachs program that we went through. And it, it, we always knew that we had three different sectors of our business, and we could understand how they all tied into each other. But the thing that took us so long and, and took us a long time to wrap our head around is how can we create messaging that ties all these in together? How can we put this on a website and show everybody, you know, our movement is to create jobs all over the United States through multiple assets and we, through multiple factors, and we can do that in many ways. And we're very, very proud of this website and urge you all to go again, thenextmovegroup.com. Uh, go check it out, and I really think it's going to hit home why we do what we do. And listen to what you just said. So Goldman Sachs, they chose us in 2017 to do a small business accelerator. So they try to take stage two growth companies and accelerate them to, to bigger levels. And I would say it's worked. We've added more employees since they helped us, which is their, which is their goal. So Brandon and Gabby, if you're listening to this, you could thank Goldman Sachs. But but they really took their expertise and, uh, and trained us and helped us figure out messaging for the small to mid-sized companies and nonprofit organizations and and communities and so uh, that was kind of a turning point for our business we did that in 2017 and uh, in 18 we were pretty flat because we were uh, we were really uh, reorganizing to do everything they taught us to do we didn't lose money but we really didn't have that big leap and then last year we went straight up before we had this website so we finally had enough money we could invest in a good website which is what we have done. i know but now you're letting people know that it's uh, 2020 and it took us two years to get a website built so took us two years <laughs> i don't know i remember sitting in st louis in the office in st louis on a cold night i was there by myself Imran worked for us at the time you weren't there and i was sitting at that office till two in the morning <laughs> trying to work on this message and so special thank you to goldman sachs and the 10,000 Small Businesses Program. And everybody that everybody that builds a website knows that, that the content can get stale very quickly and you always have to be updating it, and it's quite a daunting, uh, a daunting process. However, our issue was really not with the, the content and updating. It really took us two years to, to figure out exactly how to tell people what we've had in our, our, our hearts and guts the entire it time. Used to be, it used to be hard. People would ask me, what do we do when we first started our business? And I would try to explain them. Zulu's going by. If you hear something blaring loud, it distracts Alex. But we'll just power power on through. You should come to New Orleans sometime for Mardi Gras if you've never been. But I used to have a hard time giving our 30-second pitch because we do a little site selection, executive search. And all. You, can, you say you cannot avail, but the average Joe doesn't know what you're talking about. The average Joe will look at you like, what is that? And so uh, really what Goldman Sachs helped us do is hone that down into what we do is create economic growth for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations. We do that multiple ways that you can find out when you go on our website, but that's what we do. And most people, when I tell them that now, they get it. They may wonder, well, how do you do it? What, but they understand, okay, that's what you guys do. So they helped us immensely with that. And if you go to our website, you'll see that really all over it. So now you sort of understand our mission. We're going to talk a little bit about how we do what we do and really what we do. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, though, because you can go to our website to see that. And I will say uh, our team has worked really hard to make this website highly interactive. There's videos and webinars you can watch on there and all kind of different ways that you can interact with us. So, so if you really want to know how and what we do, you go on the nextmovegroup.com and you can see all of those services. But, but real quick, I want to touch on each one. And, and hit them quickly. So one, site selection work. We've probably helped, I don't know, it's between 10 and 20 companies do site selection uh, services, where, and, and those have really scaled. We're doing some of our biggest searches right now. 
And uh, how I tie that back to our mission is I really believe if you recruit a small to mid-sized manufacturer as opposed to a big company who has money that they can, you know, I have seen companies literally build plants, spend a billion dollars and never operate them. I've seen that happen from the Fortune 100 companies. If you recruit the small to mid-sized ones, it's our belief that once they put down roots there, you're going to have them. Certainly markets change. People lose contracts. These things happen. But we think it ought to be a big part of an economic developer's uh, recruiting mission, a state's recruiting mission, to recruit small to mid-sized manufacturers. Because exactly. if those companies spend 20 or $30 million, they're not going to move to China to save a penny when the election doesn't go the way they want. Exactly. They put down roots in the community. It's very unlikely that a, a small family-owned company is going to move to Mexico to save a couple dollars uh, on labor or, or, or whatever the reason. Um, so, you know, we always use the old baseball analogy, but it really is applicable here that the singles and doubles uh, are kind of what you want to score a run. I mean, the home runs are always nice and they're flashy, but but a couple 50 jobs and 150 job plants uh, are really going to put down roots in the community, get involved in the in the local little league and in the school system and really grow your community. And that's something that we want to see happen. And, you know, I think back to my dad's story with Sunbeam. Sunbeam, big company, flush with cash. They had every reason in the world to move the plant to China. Uh, but but what they were making was blankets that, you know, uh, were, were very cheap, and so they could make them wherever they wanted to. So uh, we like to see folks recruit companies that, that put down manufacturing of big products. You know, we do a lot of work in towns that maybe doesn't have an interstate. And I tell them, you got to recruit stuff that makes big, heavy stuff that doesn't run a lot of trucks. <laughs> you know, you can still recruit manufacturing. They just, you just can't have a whole lot of trucks going back and forth. And so I think about my community where I'm from, you know, that would actually work there. Also, I would say uh, uh, what I enjoy about site selection is we're able to really bring the process to Fortune 100 companies use. John Sisson joined our team, and he runs our site selection project. He joined us in 2016. And he's a member of the Site Selectors Guild, been with some big organizations, and, and so he's really got a heck of a process. And, and one that all the big – he's done huge petrochemical deals, and he's able to use that process to really help our small to mid-sized companies use the same process that big companies use to drive results for them. And so if we find them locations where they're going to be profitable, they're going to employ more people. It's going to be better for the, for the economy of the United States. And so I, I'm really excited about what he's done and how we're able to use the process the big companies use to help our targeted industries of the small to mid-sized companies. Exactly. And most site location firms use a very similar model. Um, however, it's all based around lowering operational costs and finding the, the smartest place to do business. i tell you how good a site selectors we are. Uh, we chose New Orleans and St. Louis for our offices, and look how that's turned out. I mean, New Orleans couldn't have worked out any better. Uh, number one, I love it here. I mean, it has everything in the world you want to do, but it's worked out for us, and it ties really with our mission. Do you know there's really no Fortune 100 companies here but Entergy? And that, of course, is electric power. New Orleans is built on family-owned businesses, lots of them. And uh, so it's worked out great. Nearly all our clients come here for something. And you're based in St. Louis, which is close to a lot of our manufacturers. You know, we've helped a lot of companies in Illinois. Uh, and, and we've done work there in St. Louis, Kansas City, and so forth. St. Louis definitely has uh, some larger companies, but they also have yeah, the, the second largest Mardi Gras celebration, which I saw a lot of pictures on social media from this Saturday. They had good uh, weather up there and and uh, and had a good time in Soulard. So. Mobile would argue you over that. Well, let them Mobile argue. Mobile would argue over that. Mobile's probably got the second. St. Louis probably has the third. But make no mistake, the first is right here rolling by my window right now, as I think Rex is about to roll. Rex is the king of Mardi Gras. So let's transition now to executive searches, which really have scaled. Uh, folks that are on our email list probably getting tired of seeing them. We're sending out an email about once a week with a new executive search. And, and uh, what I'm excited about that is we have grown out from just the economic development businesses to other businesses that support executive search. So now we're doing ports and power companies and schools. And we did the World Trade Center, which is a, a trade organization that's sort of akin to executive search, city manager, county manager, and so forth. Because we really believe that an economic developer cannot be successful unless they have a team of people surrounding them that are pro-business. You know, you can put the best economic developer in the world in a, in a community, and if they don't have the city manager behind them, the electric company behind them, how in the world are they going to be successful? Exactly. And so what we're really doing is, is, yes, we do the executive searches for economic developers, but we're growing that business, and it's a focus of ours 
We want to surround economic developers with business development minded people. Exactly. So, so pro development officials, I think, is key here. It's definitely part of of our movement to grow the U.S. economy is to find people that are very pro development minded. Uh, whether it's a, a port director, whether it's your local nonprofit, your chamber of commerce people, we want to build an entire team in your community uh, of people that want to see uh, pro development happen in your community. We also offer various economic development products, and they are designed to make an economic developer's job easier. We will make their life easier. It's not an easy job. Everybody listening to this knows that. I was an economic developer. I sit in those shoes. So we have designed products. If you go to our website, thenextmovegroup.com, and click on the economic development products page, you're going to see 10 or 15 products. Every one of them are designed to make your life easier, whether it's to help you create prospects, deal with your board, they're not 200-page strategic plans. They're designed to make your life easier. Right. We definitely want to create products that have action items, not a large strategic plan that's going to sit on the shelf. You know, We want to deliver something that, that has definable action items that you can implement quickly, whether it's a, a, a virtual building program that, that most of you all have seen by now that, that really helps you save money and still use a spec building as bait to get prospects in town. Um, or a targeted industry study where what we really do is is build a sales and marketing piece uh, that you can put right on your website or develop into PDF formats to head out to prospects. We want to look at everything from the, the sales side. Uh, now, we'll, we'll hand you a document that has your weaknesses and stuff in it too, but we don't want to publicly do that. We want to make your job as easy as possible so you can be selling all the time. Yeah, our whole emphasis is putting development and economic development, business development tactics, online marketing tactics, if you've seen our website, if you've listened to our podcast, you probably know we're pretty good at online marketing. And so what we want to do is really help economic developers. Most, most of them have small staff, small budgets. Help them use whatever they have to really make their life easier. You know, uh, We also do executive searches, and a lot of times the board members will tell us, well, we just feel like our economic developer waits for the state to bring them something. They need to go get something on their own. And so we hear that over and over. But we know how to go get it on your own. We get our own site selection prospects ourselves. We know how to do that. And so, you know, part of really what gets me excited are are helping economic developers. Uh, With cost-effective programs, most of our things are going to be a whole lot cheaper than a 500-page strategic plan. And and they're going to deliver results for you. And if you want a good strategic plan, we know lots of good firms that do that work. I've got several pop right to my mind that I would recommend highly. That's just not what we do. We want to come in, quickly give you something that's going to move the needle in some regard, whether it's helping you with the board, helping with elected officials, or some kind of marketing. So we urge you to go to thenextmovegroup.com, click on the ED products page, and just click around. If there's any way that we can help you out with anything, there's there's plenty of interactive buttons on there that you can reach out to us instantly and and uh, and message us or just give us a call, and, and we'd love to sit down and talk to you about ways that we could help you. Yeah, and as we wrap this up, because it is time to go, this is the last day of Mardi Gras. Folks, follow me on Facebook. No, I've been doing this for about a week now, so it's time to go enjoy our last uh, 12 hours of Mardi Gras. I don't know if folks know this or not. At midnight tonight, uh, the the cops come through Bourbon Street and clear out the bars. Have you ever been on Bourbon Street? It, is, they- it is fascinating. I tell people... Uh, from an economic development uh, mindset, it is it is amazing to see not only uh, how efficient they are at closing the whole city down in a matter of minutes, but they can sweep all the trash from oh. every street onto one street and, and pick it up within an hour or two. And, and that's what I find interesting, how quickly they can get all those drunk people out into their hotels and the trash cleaned up. So we only got 11 hours and 53 more minutes to enjoy Mardi Gras, so we're going to have to wrap it up. But let me end with encouraging you to go to thenextmovegroup.com. On, on every page on there, we've got webinars, uh, and they're typically 10 to 20 minutes really telling you how we can help you in that service, whether it's, uh, I think we've got the top six ways we can help an economic developer be successful. We've got the top five ways we help hire city manager. You know, just browse around. We've got some 10 to 20-minute webinars on there. we also got some one-minute videos because a lot of people don't have the patience for 10 to 20 minutes, but you can browse around on there and really see uh, how we how we do all our services. We also list all of our current open executive searches on there. Um, and even if, if one of those searches don't register for you, we want to make sure and you reach out to us and let us know if you're needing any, uh, if you're looking for other opportunities. Send us your resume and it's something that we will keep on file and reach out to you if we think we might have a right fit. And we have grown almost entirely to this point by word of mouth and uh, and online marketing. So now I think we got a new website out there. 
we encourage you send this around to people uh, that, that may be interested in us. And uh, a lot of our ideas come from people like you saying, hey, you ought to consider this. Uh, our mission is to grow the economy for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations. So, you know, you could call us up and say, hey, I need help with this. We may have never thought about it. But if we really think about it, if you come up with something and you think we're the firm for it, and it's not on our website, you call us. If it's going to create economic growth for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations, we'll do it. So we'll wrap it up there and go enjoy our Mardi Gras. Again, go to thenextmovegroup.com to see what all we do, and uh, happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody.